So today I'll be reviewing Pokemon Journeys Episode 116, The Champion's Pride, Lance vs. Diantha. This was the second match of the Masters 8 Tournament first round with Lance vs. Diantha in a 3 on 3, so let's talk about it. So the episode starts off with Ash wondering who he should root for and he tells Hop and Go that he's not only met Diantha and Lance before, but he also battled Diantha once, which is actually inaccurate since he battled her twice, once with Pikachu and the second time with Greninja. I've seen some people saying that the battle with Greninja wasn't included because Ash Greninja was involved and they're trying to get rid of it, but I think this was just the wording error or at least I hope so. Moving on though, after that we get the main introductions where Lance starts by hyping up his match, similar to what Leon does which I thought was cool, and while he's doing that we get cameos of Richie who battled Ash back during the Kanto League, as well as Jimmy, Marina, and Vincent from Pokemon Chronicles which was unexpected but nice. Then when it was Diantha's turn we got to see Sawyer along with Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor, which I thought was pretty cool. I really enjoyed how unique all the Kanto and Johto cameos were, they could have easily just used gym leaders like Brock and Missy or even Chuck who we've seen in the series, but instead they decided to give us Richie who we haven't seen in 7 Seven generations as well as the Pokemon Chronicles characters who haven't been seen in over 900 episodes which I thought was pretty cool. Then we get the start of the battle with Lance using Dragonite and Diantha using Aurorus and early on Diantha sets up her defense with Light Screen and Reflector to strengthen her Pokemon's defenses against both special and physical attacks and as Steven and Cynthia pointed out put the pressure on Lance and gave Diantha the upper hand but like Leon pointed out it was still too early to call and the battle wasn't easy which is why Lance was able to get the first win despite being at a disadvantage. After that Diantha sends out Gorgice which gets Jesse hype and Lance sends out Gyarados and Gorgice uses its signature move Trick or Treat which adds Ghost to Gyarados's typing, which is why it was eventually taken out by Shadow Sneak and Phantom Forts, which became super effective. After that, Lance sends out High Dragon, who manages to take out Gorgas with Dark Pulse, leaving Diantha with just her Gardevoir in a 2v1 battle. But Diantha wasn't worried at all and says that she's going to put on her greatest performance, which she actually does since once her Gardevoir Mega Evolves, she manages to stop all of High Dragon's moves and takes it out with Moonblast, making this a 1v1 with Dragonite versus Gardevoir. And Lance wastes no time and decides to Dynamax Dragonite, which was a cool reference to the giant Dragonite in Gen 1, and Lance's strategy was to have Dragonite make the best of its time limit in its Gigantamax form, which is why he used Maxed Ice even though it wore out both Dragonite and Gardevoir in the battle, and Diantha was able to figure out his plan and the fact that he was going to attack once the Dynamax wore out, which is something even Ash pointed out and that pretty much spelt the end for Lance in this battle, since once the Dynamax was over Diantha called Checkmate and Gardevoir finished off Dragonite with Moonblast, giving Diantha the win and advancing her into the final four where she'll be facing Leon. After the the battle Lance admits that Diantha had him at her mercy and that her victory was magnificent. Then we get everyone else's reactions with Leon saying that he can't wait to perform with her in their battle and we see Team Rocket doing an interview with Diantha and afterwards we get a brief interaction with Lance and Ash and he tells Ash to hang in there. Then we get to see Iris talk to Ash and she says that she's a bit nervous but also fired up about her battle and she says that she's going to win a battle before Ash does. Then we get the start of Iris versus Cynthia with Iris using Excadrill and Cynthia using Gastrodon and with that the episode ends. This was a pretty good episode when it comes to all of the character interactions as well as the cameos and references. We probably have a lot more coming with Iris and Cynthia battling in the next episode, so I can't wait to see who shows up as a cameo. Now let's talk about the battle. As I predicted, Diantha won and in great fashion, which is exactly how I thought this would go since Diantha has a team that's perfectly built to battle Lances. Even if this battle was a 6v6, I still think Diantha would have won because her team is built to counter dragons. Even if we look at just the Pokemon that she used in this battle, she had the potential to sweep if Aurorus was able to beat Dragonite in that first matchup, which is why Cynthia said Diantha had the upper hand in the battle even though the battle had just started. Diantha's decision to set up her defense and utilize Gorgice's signature move to turn High Dragon and Gyarados into ghost types to make her moves more effective are what gave her the win and a spot in the semi-finals. My only two criticisms of the battle are that it felt slow which in turn made it feel more like a game battle than a typical anime battle. This felt like it was a competitive battle which to a degree makes sense since these are champions and they have to use strategy to beat each other but I still think the battle was too slow and the animation was lackluster for a world championship battle. It wasn't terrible and we didn't get 3 one shots but this battle could have used some more creativity and greater animation highlights especially since this was delayed for 2 weeks. We'll probably get more animation highlights in Iris' battle with Cynthia and Ash vs Steven but I still think this battle deserved more attention since it is a world championship match. With that being said, I give this episode an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed all of the character interactions, the references, the cameos, and the use of strategy in the battle, but the main focus of the episode was the battle, and it was slow and lackluster in the animation department, which isn't much of a complaint overall, but it does keep this episode from being rated any higher. With that being said, be sure to give me your thoughts on the battle in the comment section below, and let me know what your favorite cameo was from this episode. Thanks for watching, and bye.